Before we proceed on our discussion, let me present to you our objectives. At the end of this video, you should be able to Define and identify the parts of a circle Solve for the minor arc and major arc given the central angle Determine the semicircle, minor arc, and major arc of the circle. Illustrate congruent circle and congruent arcs. Solve for the inscribed angle given the intercepted arc. By definition, circle is a set of points on a given plane equidistant from a fixed point called the center. Meaning, the points on the circle have the same distance from the center. Usually, circles are named by their centers. The figure shown is a circle with center O. Thus, this is called circle O. After understanding the definition of a circle, we can now move to the different parts of a circle or the lines related to a circle. Starting with the radius. A radius of a circle is a segment whose endpoints are the center of the circle and a point on the circle. On the given circle O, the radii, plural form of radius, are segment OP, segment OR, and segment ON. We must remember that all radii of the same circle are equal. If the measurement of segment OP is 5 cm, therefore the measurement of segment OR and ON are also 5 cm. Next is the chord. Chord is a segment whose endpoints are points on the circle. On the given circle O, the chords are segment NL, segment NT, and segment NR. Another word that we need to remember is the diameter. It is a special kind of chord containing the center of the circle. Which of the given three chords is an example of a diameter? You are right! The example of the diameter is the segment NR because this is the chord that contains the center point O. Always remember that the diameter is twice the length of the radius. If the measurement of our radius is 5 cm, therefore, the measurement of our diameter is 5 times 2, which is equal to 10. The next part of the circle is what we call the second line. It is a line which intersects the circle at two distinct points. On the given circle O, the second line is the line NT, wherein it touches the point N and point T of the given circle O. Aside from second line, we also have the tangent line. It is a line that intersects the circle at exactly one point. This point is called the point of tangency. On the given circle O, the tangent line is the line RS. And the point of tangency is point R, since that is the point where the line touches the circle O. After second and tangent line, let us now move on to central angle. It is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle and with two radii as its side. In the given circle U, the central angle is angle LUV, where it divides the circle into arcs. The first arc is the minor arc, which is the arc LV. The second arc contains the point E, which is the arc LEV. Also, the sum of the measures of the central angle of a circle with no common points is 360 degrees. In the given figure, the measurement of angle 1, angle 2, 
angle 3 and angle 4 is equal to 360 degrees. Note that all measures of angles and arcs are in degrees. To understand more about circle, let's discover arc. Arc is a part of a circle. It can be in the form of semicircle, minor arc, or major arc. Semicircle is an arc measuring one half of the circumference of a circle. It is named by using the two end points and other point on the arc. Example of semicircle in the given circle U are arc CLV, arc CTV, arc LOE, and arc LCE. Minor arc is an arc of a circle that measures less than a semicircle. Example of a minor arc is arc LO, arc OV, arc OVE, arc VET, arc LCT, arc VE, and arc CT. Major arc is an arc of a circle that measures greater than a semicircle. Example of major arc is arc LOT, arc OVC, arc OVL, arc VOT, and arc PEL. Let us now discover the relationship between the central angle and the arc. The degree measure of a minor arc is the degree measure of the central angle which intercepts the arc. In the given example, circle E, the central angle is angle SEL, which is equal to the intercepted arc or the minor arc SL. For example, if the measurement of our angle SEL is equal to 135 degrees, Therefore, the measurement of the arc SL is also equal to 135 degrees. Moreover, the degree measure of a major arc is equal to 360 minus the measure of the minor arc with the same endpoints. To find the measurement of the arc SFL, we need to subtract 360 degrees to the measurement of the minor arc SL which is equal to 135 degrees. So 360 degrees minus 135 degrees will give us 225 degrees and that is the measurement of the major arc. Let us now learn about congruent circles. These are the circles with congruent radii. In the given figure, segment LO is a radius of circle O, and segment VE is a radius of circle E. Since segment LO is equal to segment VE, they are both 7, then we can conclude that circle O is congruent to circle E. Moreover, congruent arcs are arcs of the same circle or of congruent circles with equal measures. In the given figure, arc MA is congruent to arc TH since they have the same measure. They are both 45 degrees. Also, if circle O is congruent to circle S, then we can conclude that arc MA is congruent to arc JH and arc TH is congruent to arc JH. Let's learn about inscribed angle. It is an angle whose vertex is on the circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. Always remember that the measure of the intercepted arc is twice the measure 
of the inscribed angle. Intercepted arc is an arc that lies in the interior of the inscribed angle and has the endpoints on the angle. On figure number 1, we have the circle X. The angle ABC is an inscribed angle and the intercepted arc is arc AC. The center of the circle is in the interior of the angle. If the measurement of the angle ABC is 65 degrees, therefore, the measurement of the intercepted arc is 130 degrees. On figure number 2, angle DEF is an inscribed angle and its intercepted arc is arc DF. One side of the angle is the diameter of the circle. If the measurement of the arc is 90 degrees, what is the measurement of the inscribed angle? You are right, it is 45 degrees. On the figure number 3, we have the angle GHI, which is the inscribed angle, and the intercepted arc is arc GI. If the measurement of the inscribed angle is 15.5 degrees, what is the measurement of the intercepted arc? You are right. The measurement of the intercepted arc is 31 degrees. You can also notice that the center of the circle is in the exterior of the angle.